Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's episode, powered by Perfect Sports Nutrition, is about hand pins and frames and how to use it in your training. Today's episode, we're breaking down hand pins and frames, and this is a very advanced topic, but I'm gonna show you how you can use it in your training at a more basic level and understanding. First of all, let's talk about what is a hand pin and frame and how we use it. So, hand pin and frames are trying to use your hands to kind of control your opponents, okay? This is considered a frame. You're framing yourself and positioning yourself connected to your partner, okay? so. The frame could come in different ways. Sometimes I can be here in an angle, I can use lead hand, rear hand frames. A lot of times here, you can say a long guard style is a form of a frame as well, because you're using this hand here. We've seen people use this hand here to be able to create here defensively. Now, why I like to use frames and why most people do is kind of when you circle and put yourself in an different angled position, you want to keep that hand pinned from getting hit. So if, for example, if I want to take an angle to my left, I might hand frame to angle, right? Otherwise, if I don't hand frame that hand pin that hand, if I come here, I'm gonna hit. So if I can frame here, take an angle, and then shoot my rear hand, it's safer for me to take angles by using these frames. Now, so defensively and offensively, it helps you set up the big shot. Now, there's different ways, like I keep mentioning, right? Now, the way I like to work on it at, at first is using it through my zombie drills. Now, the idea is use the frame to create an angle. So as Matt pressures towards me, I can hand frame here. And he just keeps walking at me, and I just keep hand framing. Now, you see how I use different options, right? I don't just stick my hand here and then move, that's fine as well, but I almost use it like a strike in an open hand slap and palm, right? So what I'll do is, I wanna keep that hand to his head, so I might smack it with a hook and then angle and keep pushing here, okay, to be able to create that attack. So having that nice stiff arm frame is gonna keep him away and keep him turning towards me, right? If I don't frame here, right, he just could turn towards me, but by here now, it makes it very difficult and I can keep turning and trying to punch through the guard, see? Ideally, by creating this angle, bang, I wanna punch through here, okay? So, using that with the zombie drill. Now, to make it nice and simple and easy, I can go this way, so if it comes here, I circle out, he keeps coming. Now, one I like is switching my stance and then angling out on this side, okay? So the pressure comes, I'm using the hand frame and angles, okay? So this is the way you use it to use your angles, to use your movement, and to stay safe while doing it. Now to advance the drill, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but what I would do is add a rear strike based on the hand frame. So as the pressure comes, hand frame and angle, boom, shoot the rear straight. Okay, I might switch my stance, angle, hand pin, boom, straight. Pressure comes, hand pin, angle, boom, drop the rear straight. Now, I like to do it to the head, okay, to the body, and keep moving. Now, you see how the drill forces you to continue to use the hand frame after. So the problem a lot of newer fighters do is they'll get the angle, they hit, and then they come back to their stance, which allows the opponent to come back and counter and fight back. So the drill here is important to use your hand frame. After you hit, okay, go right back to the hand frame. Hit, right back to the hand frame, hit. Now remember what I said, it's not always positioned there and glued. What I might do is boom, I might use this slapping hands. See how I slap? Sometimes it's firm, sometimes it's a double, triple hit, and then if the pressure comes, I should switch. Okay, using this almost slapping hand frame to make that pressure, right? Keep that hand glued to their head. So finding the rear straight, is a very important one, okay? Now, frames could also help in, when you're nice and close here. Say from here, you might use a nice long frame and they're trying to pressure in, frame it, frame it, boom, right? You're keeping them away using a nice longer style frame, right? More of your long guard style, right? So here, I'm here, create that frame, helps you come off and be able to mix those kicks. It's a distance thing, right? Or if I keep a hard, a hard frame here and the pressure comes, I can mix up the knees. 
Now, one of my favorite knockouts I've seen is back at Glory 9. Okay, Michael Dute, I challenge you guys all to watch this. Michael Dute versus Tyrone Spong. Okay, what happens is you see Tyrone Spong, after getting knocked down, he uses this frame here. He's using this here to keep Dude away, then all of a sudden, boom, the big power shot coming off of this little frame, right? Now, it, it wasn't a heavy frame, but it, having this connection was just enough to be able to create that big knockout punch, okay? So it can be a longer frame versus inside hand pin. There's so many differences, and I think the big confusion is too many people try to put all of these hand fighting techniques into little boxes, hand frame, pins, when a lot of times they go hand in hand, right? So for example, I could be here with a long guard elbow into a hand pin, okay? So the main thing is when you do the hand pins and frames, have control of your opponent's hands, right? Very important. Now, when I fight, for example, maybe an, an open stance fighter, and I'm an orthodox, I might use different hand frames to here. Look, even this considered here, if we're playing lead hand dominance, I might here. I'm still controlling the hand. It's considered a frame because I am touching you, right? I have made contact. We're in connection with each other. So even in a north versus south, that's an option. Now, the other way I use it in north versus south, I can come here and pin this rear hand. When you fight open stance, which punch do most people want is that rear hand. So I could feint, come here, and hand frame here to be able to come inside to create an angle or attack. So I hand pin, long guard, and frame this rear hand in order to be safe from it. Okay? So this is the way I want you to use it. You're going to use it one, you're going to use that hand pin to create those angles. Okay? Hand angles, attack, keep control of that hand. Okay? You can punch upstairs, you can use it as a stand switch but you're using it defensively as angles to find that rear strike. I can be in here, I can still kick off of here, right? Off of the frame, I can still kick very easily, okay? So I can mix in different types of strikes, okay? That's the important. Now you can use it long guard, framed as an extended finder, boom, right? You can use it here, boom, to throw an attack, okay? You can use it here to be safe, right? I might even be here. Right? I'm framing both hands. If Matt goes to throw something, boom, I can control it. Right? I'm still in control of the hands. Right? So that's considered a frame, catching, hand pin, and they all go towards hand fighting. Okay? So a lot of detail here and maybe a lot of confusion, but just remember, controlling the hands is the most important thing, whether you're creating angles, offensive, defensively, and how you use the frame, it's up to you. Right? But just understand, don't overcomplicate it. If you want to get close, the safest thing is to control your opponent's hands. In kickboxing, it's nice. We got big gloves, but I know a lot of you listening are MMA fighters. So the importance of hand fighting, hand pinning, and framing becomes that much more important. If I have a small glove or bare knuckle and I'm in a street fight, right, the main thing is when you do these hand pins and frames, right, you got fingers. So if I'm an MMA fighter, the number one thing is, look, I could even grab wrists if I want, okay? So hand fighting becomes a little different here if I can grab hands, all right? So using the connection, the feeling of your hands and fingers will just help this style of fighting for you, okay? Make sure you cut liking, subscribing, and sharing Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA, and you support the channel sponsors, Perfect Sports Nutrition, linked below with the code Bazooka20. Hayabusa with Hayabusa Fight with all their super sick gear. We have bazookashop.com and last but not least, bazookatraining.com. Four new videos every Monday, sparring drills, tutorials, bag workouts, home workouts. Every Monday we release them. Plus an archive with over 100 different training videos. Yes, 100 different training videos for you to watch plus four new ones every week for a little price of $9.99 US per month. All right, head over to bazookatraining.com and let's get learning. Welcome to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA Online Training. I'm Bazooka Joe Valtellini, the owner here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Over the past year, I've designed and created a website to teach Bazooka curriculum at home and across the world. 
The purpose of this website is for you to one, hit your fitness and health goals, all while learning world-class martial arts instruction from me. The beautiful thing about this website, it's geared for all levels. So if you're learning martial arts for the first time as a beginner, we help you progress into the bigger stages. And if you're a pro fighter, guess what? We have different fight concepts for you to improve your tool set and your skills in the ring or cage. As the fastest rising kickboxing world champion and a lifelong martial artist with over 30 years of experience, I've been able to combine my passion for martial arts and teaching to create this website. This website's gonna give you some of the tricks, secrets, and inside look at some of the training I use to win my world title. Once you subscribe to this site, you're gonna be getting weekly training videos and tutorials that you can do from anywhere. The sections are broken up into three parts. The first is bag workout. So if you have a bag at home or at your gym, you can use these workouts to supplement your training. The second is at home workouts. A lot of us don't have the room for a bag or a bag in general, so these workouts are for no equipment needed and you can do them anywhere. And finally, the tutorial section. If you're having any problems with a specific technique or fight concept that's covered in any of the workouts, go to the tutorial section, learn the technique, and then go back to the workout, and this time, do it with proper technique. One of the added benefits once you subscribe is the forum section, where you can get a more personalized experience where you can ask questions, and I'll be able to go in there and answer them. It's all about building a team and a community of martial artists helping each other grow. So subscribe now to get access to all the videos plus more so you can be part of the squad here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA.